Welcome. Today we're going to talk about harmonic oscillators in the complex plane. So this is a bit of a departure from some of the work we've been doing uh, establishing integral theorems for uh, functions of a complex variable. We're going to go do something a little bit more applied here, which is talk about a mass spring system. Or, or we could be talking about a, you know, a resistor uh, inductor uh, circuit. Uh, if, um, if you will. But let's just talk about uh, the, the mass spring system. I think it's a bit more, uh, it's easier to draw what it looks like. So let's talk about that. Um, what we're going to have then, this, this system will be described by a mass, like so which is uh, you know, put on some rollers, and these rollers are frictionless. And we have a spring that's anchored to some uh, sturdy anchor that doesn't move. All right, and then the state of the system will be x of t will be the uh, position. And then, then there is, of course, time, uh, which, which we'll represent by t, which will be time. So I want to represent, I want to describe the, the motion of this oscillator uh, over time. So we kind of know that if I were to, you know, give this a little push that way, uh, the mass spring system would oscillate back and forth. It would go up and down. So if you were to plot x with time, where we, we'll usually take the neutral point for the spring to be zero, you know, it's going to look something like this. It'll be sinusoidal and, and so on and so forth out forever. All right, so let's uh, now describe this the old-fashioned way using our standard ODE theory, ODE methods. So the other thing we need to write down here is we have some sort of spring constant. So we're going to have also K is, is the spring constant. Okay, so with our ODE methods, we can do the following. We can say that, of course, um, uh, uh, we need to know something about f equals ma. And so uh, we can write that as the force on this mass, if you will, is going to be uh, proportional to uh, the position of the, of the mass. So it's actually going to be negative kx, right? And of course, acceleration as a function of time is actually just a velocity, a velocity prime, right? or rather, uh, and so what we're going to see now is also we're going to label then uh, y then, y of t is going to be equal to velocity. So that implies then that um, x prime, if you will, the derivative with respect to time uh, to, to, of the position is of course y, and y prime of t is going to be times the mass, so that's my um, ma right there is equal to negative kx. All right, so we can kind of rewrite this system as follows, as x uh, prime y prime, and that's equal to y, and that's equal to negative k over m x. All right, so we're doing pretty good here, and we've got this now, this uh, system of ordinary differential equations. And, and we can solve this pretty straightforwardly, but let me do a little thing here. I'm going to just clean this up. So we're going to do a coordinate transformation. So the coordinate transformation we're going to do is that we're going to let capital X equal the square root um, we're going to let it equal the square root of k over m uh, little x. Okay, and we can actually rewrite that again. I'm going to call that omega naught times x, where this is just a constant. Okay, so obviously, um, let's see if we can rewrite the system then. So that means um, I'm going to rewrite this as so that means that x is equal to 1 over omega naught times capital X. All right. So of course, x prime, that's equal to uh, uh, 1 over omega naught capital X. 
prime, okay? And that's, of course, equal to y. All right, good so far. Uh, the next thing we're going to do now is look at y prime. So y prime is, of course, equal to negative uh, omega squared x, or rather negative omega times capital X. All right, so if I take these two equations and I put them together there, I'm going to get an, uh, capital X prime is equal to omega naught y. Likewise, y prime is equal to negative omega naught x, capital X. All right, so this now looks a little nicer. I'm going to rewrite this again now as omega naught times, and now I'm going to make a matrix here, where that is our y, our, sorry, our, um, our capital X, and that's our y, and that becomes then a, a 1 there, a 0 there, a negative 1 there, and a 0 there, and that's equal to d dt of capital X times, and uh, capital X comma y. Right, so there is our, our linear system. And I've just written that in a nice uh, coordinate fashion. The next thing I'm going to do then is go, well, capital X, I'm going to actually just relabel that as lowercase x again. So I'm going to get back to this system. So I, I'm just relabeling my variables to clean them up a little bit here. I'm going to call that x comma y. The derivative of this vector now is equal to negative, uh, oops, equal to omega naught times the matrix 0, 1, negative 1, 1, equal to x comma y. All right, so this is the first sort of linear system, and now you may maybe have to dig up this memory uh, from back when you took an ordinary differential equations course, but this is solved by uh, finding um, eigenvalues of uh, the matrix, so which I'll, I'll call that uh, equal to a. So what we do then, of course, is, is find the determinant of a minus lambda i. So eigenvalues, I'll call those lambda. All right, and we can do that as follows. That becomes then um, where i is the identity matrix. So we were trying to find the, the, the determinant of negative lambda 1, negative 1, negative lambda. And that becomes lambda squared plus 1, uh, Oh, sorry, I forgot the omega sitting out front. Uh, so that becomes an omega there and an omega there. Uh, and that becomes omega naught squared. And we want to set that equal to zero. We want to find the lambda values that make this determinant zero. And of course, we get lambda is equal to plus or minus i omega. Okay, and from that, we, we, we conclude then that solutions x comma xy, the vector, can be written as a linear combination of a times v1 times e to the i omega naught. That's our first eigenvalue there. Okay, so these are the lambda values um, times t plus b, another constant, times v2 e to the negative i omega naught t. So of course this is the natural frequency of the of the uh, the system. Okay. And v1 and v2, what are those? Those are the um, eigenvectors. i.e., if I take my matrix A, times it by V1, I get um, I omega naught V1 coming out of it. Likewise, A times the vector V2 is equal to negative I omega naught V2. So I'm going to spare you um, the, the determining, actually finding what these vectors are. And the whole point, I guess the moral of the story, is it's a, you know, it's a... 
it's a it's a bit uh, it's it's uh, you know time consuming. But of course, it works just fine. And what we see there is we have these um, these these functions here, which you can call uh, you know eigenfunctions. That you know that span the solution space. The sol all the, it spans all the solutions that are possible for this uh, system, this mass spring system. So it describes the motion. If you have that mass sitting there, it just these these oscillation frequencies then, or this this frequency then, determines you know it's going to go back and forth. Uh, uh, and we have both the position and the velocity of the system at every point in time, and we can get that by uh, by looking at these um, natural this natural frequency of the system. All right, so now let's go back, and now I'm going to do uh, we're going to do it now. Now let let's study study this system as you know. Um, as a com as a complex vector. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let z of t be equal to x of t plus i y of t. Okay, let's see what we can do here now. Right. So uh, just like before, uh, uh, we have x prime is equal to omega naught y and y prime is equal to negative omega naught x, okay? So if this is true, let's see if we can put this together into a, a, another description, a different way to describe the same mass spring system. So then, of course, if I take a time derivative of z, that becomes the time derivative on the other side, okay? But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace what I have here. I have that and that, and I can put that in. So that's going to be omega naught y, plus i times negative omega naught x. Okay, let's see if we can, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an i, okay, in which case I'm going to get a negative omega naught y, and here I have to put a, uh, because I factored a y out of this, or an i out of this right here, I have to have a negative omega naught, oh, sorry, oops, I made a mistake. Uh, when I f when I factor that out, I get a negative omega naught x there, and a negative i omega naught y. Okay, I can do a little bit further simplification. I'm gonna take that negative sign out. I'm gonna take that omega out. All right, and then I have left as x uh, plus i y. Okay, this looks pretty good because that's clearly z. So now we have a really compact description here. So we have z prime is equal to negative i omega naught z. All right, so that's a really compact description of the same linear system we had before written in matrix form. All right, so let's see what kind of solutions we get from this. Now clearly, so if I take z, I'm going to try z of t is equal to e to the negative i omega naught t. Uh, so this is now a complex function, and we can uh, we can clearly see that z prime is equal to negative i omega naught uh, times z. Okay, uh, so remember from before we had those lambda values from when we did the eigenvector eigenvalue analysis. We got um, uh, lambda was equal to plus or minus i omega naught. Okay, so right now we're only looking at negative i omega naught. So what about positive i omega naught? What happened there? Well, what we can do to get that uh, is, let, let's now pause in here and just think about what's doing it. So if z of t is equal to e to the, if we're going to take that as our solution, e to the i omega naught t, what's that look like in the plane? Okay, this is, a, this is of course a motion in the plane. And it's clearly at time equals zero, it starts there. And oh, it goes this way. It goes in the negative direction. It goes in the clockwise direction around, and then up, 
and then dan around like that in a circle, and then back. Okay, so for t equals zero, we start there and we head that way. And then as we're coming around at t is equal to two pi over omega naught, we get back down and repeat the cycle over again. So if we think about it this way then, so our period of oscillation is going to be two pi over omega naught. Another way to write this then is actually uh, in terms of a frequency. A frequency is going to be equal to omega naught over two pi. And that's of course going to be in, um, we call that F naught, and that'll, that'll be in hertz, okay, if, if T is in seconds. But anyway, we've just now said, so this right here then is a, is a more compact uh, representation of a harmonic oscillator. So anytime you see a differential equation like that, it's, it's describing a, a pure harmonic oscillator that just rotates around the complex plane unit circle, okay? At a frequency omega naught radians per second. Okay, so that's a really nice result, and it's a really nice way to write down all of what we've done so far. So, um, so uh, now, now going back to where, where was the other, where was this one? So obviously what happens is, if I try now um, z of t is equal to e to the positive i omega naught t, you find out that that's uh, not a solution. But it turns out then, if I actually you know, redefine, if I call w of t to be equal to y plus i x, all right, so I've just reversed roles in my variables, right? It turns out then that uh, w of t equal to e to the i omega naught t is a solution to the resulting differential equation there. But what's, what's really going on here is that um, I'm describing this motion going in a clockwise direction around the plane with, uh, with the solution here. Um, and w of t, this describes the counterclockwise motion. And they're both qualitatively similar. There's nothing, uh, there's no new information in this function. This function is merely running with time in reverse. Um, and that's, of course, a property of harmonic oscillators. If you look at them, because the, we're not modeling any friction in the system, there's no loss. It's completely time reversible. We couldn't tell uh, by looking at these two solutions, this one versus that one, if time was going forward or reverse, uh, unless we had information about initial conditions. Uh, and so, uh, really, this contains all the uh, fun, essential information of the system. Uh, having just one of the solutions, so we don't really need this one at all in terms of in terms of describing motion in this in, in the complex plane in terms of a simple harmonic oscillator. All right, so now differential equations involving complex variables in time that can be written in such forms like this have a really nice property. So uh, in later lectures, we'll we'll see how this equation is uh, is uh, really important for the Schrodinger equation. And Schrodinger's equation um, shows up in quantum mechanics, and it turns out that wave functions have this nice property where this is really built inside of the Schrodinger's equation, and we just need to be uh, able to pull it out in order to understand a lot about the Schrodinger's equation. And it can help us understand some of the more uh, uh, fundamental aspects of studying quantum mechanics. All right, thank you very much.